you guys. It's Wayne from 101 Animation, and uh, someone asked me about the the doing really tight in betweens, and I know this can be very confusing in animation. Uh, you know, there's the moving hold, and then there's trace backs, and there's these and different elements that you can use to keep your scene alive when a character just comes let's say a character's here and comes over like that but right in this section right here they hold for let's say 18 frames and they hold there but the in-betweens become so tight that it's basically what you're doing is a trace back and this is this is actually used more for uh feature animation and a side note is uh, in CG animation the computer obviously it does all your in-betweens so you, you don't do any trace specs but the computer will do it and it's basically flawless you know because it's computer and but in traditional animation I'm going to show you some very as simple as possible, I'm going to show you some examples of uh, what we do. For TV animation, um, what they do is they will just hold that drawing and not do a, a super, super slow in with a bunch of tight drawings to the point to where it becomes a trace back. And a trace back is just what it sounds like. It is just tracing that that one drawing over and over and what you get is a little bit of jitter not much the better the 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 tie down is or the cleanup is you're going to get less jitter but it does keep it alive it just does because of that little bit of change in the line quality but first we're going to start off with the moving hold so here we go okay here is, I'm doing this, by the way, uh, if anyone's saying, just rough animator. Uh, I like this for doing quick tests. Here we go. Um, this is going to be, I'm going to play right now, and it's just a, a very simple, you'll see it. Okay, here we got this bird. So, I just hold the drawings all of these are just 11 frames and it's all done on twos so each drawing is going to be exposed for twos because it's a very slow movement and most of the time you will do that on twos so here we go and I'm just going to play this and talk about it so this is a drawing you want to think of it as the character came into this pose and he's just or she is just held there for 11 frames if you wish it could be for you know two seconds 48 frames being 24 frames a second and you could just hold it there and that will save you a lot of drawing time okay so that's one way to do it but if you're looking to do more, uh, let's say, full animation, where there is a drawing for uh, every two frames, here's an example of a trace back. And what I'm talking about here is we got, so we got drawing one right here, uh, right up in here. And then we got three, five, seven, nine, and it's just, I'm not even really thinking of the spacing because right over here, I put TB down and that's for trace backs. And that's just so you know, or that whoever is down, uh, your assistant's going to have to do all these trace backs. And now what I want you to notice when I play this, you're gonna see, uh, it's just, it's the line movement that is keeping it alive. And there are certain times when you'll have a scene, the character again will come over there and they just hold for a pause. 11 frames, uh, 13, 15, up to 18 frames. 
and that little bit of line movement that we're getting in there it keeps your drawing alive which i like me personally i like that I, it just uh you never get the audience never uh just sees it suddenly stop but i will use both for comedy animation i'll use the held drawing and for if it's more of a straight scene uh, if you're working on a, it's not just a feature, if you're working on a more serious film, you know, uh, Hunchback, uh, the Hunch, Disney's Hunchback, usually it's just trace backs because that was a very dramatic type of feature. And also in Sleeping Beauty, the, the old classic one, you know, this is what they would do to keep it alive. So that's one way of doing it. And what that is called is just called trace backs. You can see that each drawing is just a trace back of the very the first drawing. But you want to make sure you don't want to uh, you know, you don't want it to grow or shrink. So what I advise on something like that, you do the, you do your first drawing and then you'll do your next drawing, number three, the next drawing, as we scroll through, and we're scrolling through here, it should be uh, just traced as close as possible to the number one drawing right there. So then you do number three. But if I was gonna then do number five, so I make sure that it stays true to number one, I will just put in a blank drawing right over number one and just name it number five, but I will trace it back over number one throughout all of the drawings. I'll always use number one as my main drawing to trace back over. I'll just number them differently. So as we go through here, this is, there we go. So there we go there, and here we go. And this is drawing three, and that was copied off of drawing one, and then drawing five was copied off of number one, and so on. So that's how you do your trace backs, and that will keep it going. But now we're gonna come up to this one, and this is head trace back for number one through 11, but the feather is a little secondary action and it's just the feather will, will keep it alive even though the trace back of the head. I do a trace back of the head and as we watch this, you can see, notice how the feather is just slowing in just for that moment. And like I said, you can do it 11 drawings, you can do it up to 24 drawings. Uh, so it, it's up to you, but it keeps it alive. It keeps it moving. Now, this is not what I would call a moving hold. Um, I don't know, maybe some people do, but it's not what I would call a moving hold, but, uh, it's just an element. The element of the feather is keeping it alive. Then the character will go into the next bit of action, whatever it does as the character is held here. So what happens is, is that we got this. Note, head trace back for number one. So that was just gonna be trace back. And here's my chart for the feather. The only, the only element that is actually moving. And it's a, your basic slow, slow in chart right there that chart right there and I and I named it uh, for feather f1 to f11 and it's just slowing in uh, into f11 uh, 3 is directly halfway 5 is in between 3 and 11 and so on and so, remember everything here is done on twos and so this is this is another example of how you can 
keep your character, you know, feeling alive throughout in that traditional full character animation way of doing it. And this way works as good as, you know, the other ways. It's just up to you. You're, you're the animator, so it's really what, what you want to do. But now we'll come up to here, and this is the head and feather everything. The, the, the drawing of this bird. And it's going to be, when I play it, you'll see everything sort of moving up at the same time. And this is what is more a very simple one, but this is what is more of a moving hold. Right here. This is just, everything's moving just for that split moment of 11 frames. And this will also work. So let me go to that drawing and you can see it's the entire, I just did everything. I didn't have separate levels. I didn't have separate, separate timing for different elements of the character. I just did it all in the same exact way as the feather, but it's a slow in chart and this chart is just like the feather chart, but it's everything. It's encompassing the whole head and feather at the same time. Let's take a look at that again. And, it, and understand, if you want it to be even more cushioned, all that means is that you would put in more drawings in here. So I'll do an example chart of that. Basic, real simple chart. And if you wanted to really have it slow in there and cushion, Let's say that you just do, we do a, a simple slow in. There's one in the middle. We, then this is going to be in the middle. This is going to be in the middle of, of those two. As we proceed and we proceed and we put more and more like so. And then we got number three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, fifteen, seventeen. 19. And the way we know that it's a slow end, the way I do it, uh, there's the loop letting you know it's in between. Check out my charts video. That will explain all this to you. And everything is just slowing in. And it just keeps going. And yes, is this a lot of work? Absolutely. It's it just, but it will make it, it will fit the timing of your choice. So this with that chart right there, it just would have made it much more smooth coming into that last pose, which is number on this chart 19. But that is not what I've, I'm still just going to go with this, number 11, just as keep it simple. But let's take one more look at it, and everything's just moving together. The eyes, the skull, the beak, the feather, everything's moving together. Okay, so now let's go to, now this, one, this one's interesting. This is also what you can do, and this is what they do. Uh, they will do this in, in feature animation, television, anything. It's another choice. It's all it is. So what we have here, I'm going to play it. What we have here is that the head is held but the feather keeps moving. And what you're creating is you're gonna be creating two levels, it is what it is. So you're creating one level that is going to be just the head, and then on a separate level, you're gonna have the feather. And here we come down here, you'll see here that, I kind of mess that up. This, it says level one, held head and that's going to be held for 11 exposures which also means frames and that's so that will be 11 exposures and that will mean doing on twos so we're not doing every frame and the feather layer that will be the one on top of it, and here we have the chart for the feather, ch uh, the feather chart. And again, it's just your basic slow in right here, and same chart as before. 
The difference of this one is we got the held head. It's just it just sits there. There's no trace backs with the held head. It's just being held there and it's just the feather. That element is just it's just continuing to move. You can do this same thing on the eyes, on mouth shapes. You you can do that. You just create more layers if you like that style. I worked on a movie called Cast Don't Dance and I thought that style worked perfectly for that film because it was a cartoony film and uh, it just it fit really well to do that instead of everything being fully animated. It was full animation. I'm not saying it wasn't full animation, but it was done in a style that uh, because it was a you know cartoony film and it was it had a lot of comedy in it and it just fit with uh, the style that the director wanted. Thought it came out good. Anyway. All right, now we're gonna go to the very last one. I think that was it. Hold on one second. <laughs> oh, what this is, this is the last one, but this is just showing the feather. So imagine below this, below this was the held head and beak and that is the feather and that's the only thing you know it saves you time because you get to hold that uh the held head there so that's all that is that's just an example of that but it's really i just want you to understand it's really just these different approaches of how you can keep your animation uh moving and keep it alive and it really comes down to your personal taste of what you want to do uh, some animators they just they do everything on ones and they'll even do the trace back on ones that's their personal taste other ones will do even sometimes they'll hold the tr they'll do it on fours if it's very slow me personally i believe in ones and twos but it's your personal taste. So I hope this helps. I, I hope all of this makes sense. And uh, very good. And Judy told, what did you tell me, Judy? Oh, oh, if you like this video, uh, uh, please give it a thumbs up and, you know, give it a subscribe if you like it. I got, we have, me and my partner Judy, we're going to have plenty more videos coming out. And draw, draw, draw. That's it. Bye-bye.